With over 4 billion people on social media every day and the growth of new platforms like Bereal and the Metaverse, there's no doubt that doing international business is about being digital. Knowing how digital technologies work and how to use them to build a brand, recruit and engage with clients and collaborators is a key 21st century competence. We discuss the imperative of being digital, its opportunities and ways with two guests who have years of experience actually doing it. Christina Goggi has worked in content and digital media for leading companies for years. Benji Borge co-founded a digital marketing agency assisting organizations in Malta and outside run effective digital campaigns. Benji Borge, Christina Goggi, thanks for accepting to share your experiences with us today in this episode on digital media. I'd like to get the definition out of the way first, Christina. How would you define you know, what includes digital media and digital technologies today? So this is a very, very broad um, question to answer. Like digital media is anything from social media, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, TikTok, whatever it is, going into your website, going into um, podcasts, video, like YouTube. Um, it's, it's, it's so broad, but ultimately what a business who is looking into digital marketing needs to um, address. And the most important question begins with where is my audience? So who is my target audience and who, who am I speaking to? And um, where do they spend their time? Once you understand who that is, then you will also need to understand what your budget is and what your what your capacity is. When I say capacity, I mean your team. Exactly. Um, and then based on that, you will know where you can actually invest your time and your money. In which technologies, exactly. approaches, etc. Exactly. In which of these digital platforms you can actually um, uh, spend, your, you know, build your strategies, basically. Exactly. So it's, um, it's some work that needs to be done before you even start going there. But once you do, it's going to be the, something that's going to change um, your way, business you do things completely. Kind of forever. One thing I wanted to ask, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of companies kind of invested in digital because it was necessary, I guess. Is it, you think, Benji, part of the new normal now coming out of the pandemic? Well, it was, it was meant to always be part of the new normal. I think the pandemic squeezed and forced companies into having no other option but going digital. Um, not to say they were still late to the game. And anyone who was already set up properly before that saw big gains, okay. especially coming out of COVID. So COVID has been a, an accelerator for that case. Um, but what we're seeing is that there are, there's a very big gap between companies at different stages. So you've got certain companies who are coming out of COVID who have just gone into digital. So they've built their first e-commerce platform. They're accepting money online. You know, they're having conversations with their customers online. But then there are other more advanced clients who are now at three steps ahead of that. You know, they're looking at ERP, CRMs. How can I add more value to my customers? How can I connect the entire system? And this gap is quite big. And um, there are a lot of companies which have a lot of catching up to do. Um, it's making it easier. So technology has become more accessible okay. um, to a lot of companies. So when I started business 10 years ago, certain things like a ticketing system was kind of unheard of 10 years ago because of the price, the entry point, you know, companies nowadays who are setting up today, you know, they would go into these systems straight off the bat. Okay. Why? Because there's so much more options out there. It's, it's priced per, per seat. It's easier. So there's a lot of advantages nowadays. Um, it's kind of easier. It's easier because there's much more technology out there, exactly. much more experts, much more advice out there. We are, you know, doing this 10 years ago was harder and more costly. But some companies, you're saying, kind of started earlier and today they're reaping the fruit of that. 100%. Kind of. are, are they typically, you know, younger companies or more? Ad in, 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 in which way do you describe the gap? I think it, it's people who have foreseen the future and have taken the, the, the risks of investing, okay. right? So you need to obviously invest in this and investment doesn't just come from the technology, it comes from the people who are using those technologies, it's educa educating your customers, because um, even that, you know, you, you might invest money to accept payments online to credit cards, but your, your clients don't want to, not ready for they're not ready for it. So what are you gonna do to adapt? Are you going to give them incentives to do so? So it's, it's, it's not just as simple as let's go digital. There's a lot more around it. Yeah. Is it more 
are digital technologies more kind of for business to consumer or are there examples from your experience, you know, business to business, essentially? No, both. I mean, uh, fundamentally, whether you're, you're a direct customer, um, you, di whether you're directly communicating with the customer or you're talking to a business, technology is there for everyone. Um, marketing is there for everyone. It's obviously different strategies and like what, said, what was said before, is know your audience exactly. and know how to communicate to them. I mean, fundamentally, marketing hasn't changed exactly. all these years. It's just how we communicate to yeah, people right. on what platforms, right? So that a customer always needs something. They might know they need it or they might need to be told they need exactly. it. It's your job to go and give them that product. Absolutely. Now, whether you go through radio, TV, print, um, Twitter, TikTok, it doesn't really make a True. difference. The communication is the same. Yeah. It just gets broken down into yeah. the mediums. You mentioned marketing hasn't changed, but at the same time, one issue I want to raise with you and I want to ask Christina in the sense is issues, fundamental issues in marketing like personalization, like branding, like customer experience. Are they really changing because of digital media? Totally. I think it, it, like the change is um, in the sense of we've become smarter in how we reach our audiences. So I do agree with like Benji's point is that it's not the tools, but it's ultimately about the message. So I totally see his point. Um, but then on top of that, the tools that we have today have become significantly smarter, like advertising through digital, like Facebook and so on. While in the past you'd have, well, still in the present, you'd have a billboard or you, you just hope you hit whoever is relevant in that traditional old way. Nowadays, you can go on a platform like Facebook and you can drill down with advertising with, by interest, by where they, even time of the day, it, the, the, the way those adverts are done, it's so intelligent even in terms of you can bid and then it will hit the right audience at the right time and help you as well. Um, so we've changed significantly in terms of advertising, personalization, like you mentioned, um, is key because ultimately you need to build trust with your target audience. So at the end of the day, again, another point Benji mentioned, which I really, like I was nodding throughout because um, it's not about just investing in a tool. It's about knowing how to use the tool to speak to your right audience. Like influencer marketing is another example. Um, everyone talks about influencers at the moment. First of all, you need to choose the right ones. Um, but then on top of that, it needs, it's a personal thing and there is an element of trust because people trust brands based on what other people tell them and the people that they already work, follow. And, and um, back in the day, it used to be word of mouth. This is a new version of word of mouth in a way. So there's personalization and there's trust in this way. There's CRM, like we mentioned. Um, and there's a lot of ways you can re reach your audience. It goes back to the original thing that I mentioned, which is knowing where your audience spends time and what they're interested in and who they trust and so on. But ultimately, yes, trust is the most important thing for a brand. One thing I noticed, like, and you, you guys mentioned it already, is that, you know, whereas in the past, I guess, you used to ask someone to do things, an agent or something, in, in, in traditional advertising terms, nowadays companies need to kind of build some internal capabilities, if I understand. Mm -hmm. what, what are these skills? And is it realistic for a company, you know, to get into digital and train people in at least some basics? I mean, I work in a company that has a digital team, a marketing team. So um, I would say there needs to be a level of understanding within the company itself. But you can also outsource, like Benji is an example of that. Um, and I've done both. Like I've worked in a team where we had certain capabilities in-house, but we had to outsource certain things because it depends on the budget the company has. So if you're a small business, you obviously can't have a 20 people team, mm -hmm. you know, to do everything for you. So that is when you outsource because usually you, you need to test certain things out and that's where agencies are very helpful. Um, and then if you've tried, you've proven that this works for your company and whatnot, then you can start investing in actually getting expertise in-house. So, and what, and what, what would be those expertise, Benji, from your opinion uh, and from your interaction with mm -hmm. so many clients in so many different sectors? So we're seeing actually, at, so we're, to build on that, we're seeing a third option. Um, uh, and it's something which we've been pushing for quite a few years now and we keep on investing in it. So it dep what we find is a lot of teams are too small to invest in the right people in-house. So what happens? A lot of companies, SMEs, will hire a marketing executive. This marketing executive 
is brought in with the pre-notion that she or he is going to do everything, um, cannot do everything, um, uh, ends up failing after a year, then the directors have to rehire someone again, and it's a never-ending loop of back and forth and back and forth. Then they get really annoyed and they go to an agency full-time. Agency will never be able to, to deliver an SME what they require because it's very emotional, it's very contact, you have to know the business. So then the agency will, after the honeymoon period, will fail. Exactly. Then the, the, they, the directors go back into hiring someone. It's this never loop back and forth. There's a third option. Um, we train, recruit, and deploy people in your company. So we are at a, at a very unique position where we are attracting the right talent and training them to have an agency mind. Mm -hmm. um, these people will never apply for a job inside a, a business. Why? Because they have an agency mindset. They want to work on different projects. They want to be taught by, by people who are experts in their field. Mm -hmm. So we attract these people. We train them. They actually work on projects for a year or six months. And then we find the right person to deploy into your company, either full-time or part-time. So they'll come to your office for twice a week. Exactly. They work there in your office and they're literally a full-time employee for those two days, but then they do another day at the agency. So they're getting best of both worlds. Exactly. You as a business owner, you're also getting stability because if this person is not doing their job well or they leave, we just replace again. Exactly. So you as an owner can continue running your business yeah. um, and you're not at the risk of you're dependent on one person. Exactly. And you can scale up. If your business is doing well and you need another designer, another content writer or so yes. forth, yeah. you just come to us like a tap and increase. Is it because the, the, the skills for digital media are so kind of Varied today, it's no longer. No, the just... problem is that you've got one person speaking Italian, one speaking Chinese. Oh. If you're the director of a company and your job was manufacturing for the past 50 years, okay. you do not speak the language of a developer. Okay. You do not speak the language of a designer. Mm -hmm. You will never speak that language. Okay. So you trying to employ these people just doesn't work. Right. So either you have to hire someone internally who's going to be your point of contact mm -hmm. to talk to these people. So you need a CMO, a CTO, or a CMBDO, which is a chief marketing and business development officer, right. which we're seeing as well. Mm -hmm. But if you never spoke that language, you will never have empathy or sympathize with a developer or designer. So that relationship will never flourish. Yeah. 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 Um, so there needs to be that bridge. Yeah, between, between kind of, or, or a balance between having some competences that are internal and are kind of from yes. the ground up within the company and some things that are more specialized and therefore... And, you and this is where we see the biggest failures happening is the communication. Okay, mm. okay. The communication meaning between, between the kind the of... The internal client? people and, and that's where the biggest failures happen as well from companies to agencies. Okay. Yeah. So an agency always goes into it to the right attitude, right? They want to do help, they want to help. Generally, it always dwindles off because there's lack of communication, lack of clarity, and a frustration from both ends. Yeah, yeah. Um, there needs to be that middle ground, that translator who's exactly. talking both sides. Yeah. I want to move into kind of the kind of what you do in terms of strategy per se, what companies should basically do. A lot of people listening to us would be interested in international business. Does it make a difference, Christina, if I'm, I'm running a digital marketing campaign in a developed country or in a less developed country, you know? It makes a, a, a quite a significant difference, actually, um, where your audience is, because I, I, Going into branding, for example, even the brand name sometimes needs to be changed right. depending on where the, where the region is. Like I've worked in a company where our tagline in certain countries was amazing, but in other countries had <laughs> implications. <laughs> implications that were wrong. Um, so we had to change it completely. So localization, when we talk about localization, it's not just about literal translation, but you actually, when we say localize, it's truly localizing by being topically relevant, basically, for whatever that region, um, whatever resonates with the people in those regions. So budget changes as well. Like, I'll use an example. We're doing marketing, like SEO, for example, in, um, in a region such as Latin America or in Eastern Europe is significantly cheaper than doing SEO in mm. countries that are SEO more competitive. search engine optimization. Yes, sorry, yes, search engine optimization. Um, so yes, SEO search engine optimization, yes. So that, how much, you, how much you actually need to budget depending on the region, how you communicate within those regions, how do you, like from branding into content marketing into whatever you do, even the social media platforms, for example, some regions, um, like I'll use Malta as an example. A lot of people are on Facebook in Malta and on Instagram and so on. In some countries, like I'll use Denmark as an example. Um, actually, Sweden is a perfect example. Facebook was not as big for the industry that I was working in as much as it was in some other regions. So 
just like I said, you need to know your audience as a, where are they spending their time. That rule applies based in on different the different geographies and different regions. Totally. And is, is, it, is it the case that, you know, apart from investing in technologies, it's really about kind of content nowadays and, and the creation of, you know, compelling content that really says something? It's always been about content. Yes. It's, uh, the, I mean, the, the, the father of content is Ogilvy, you know, if you look at their advertising and the, the, what they did and what they do, it's built around content. Um, these are platforms, you know, um, if you're not going to evoke an emotion with your customer, if you're not going to build trust, you're not going to make them want to be part of who you are and what you stand for as a brand. And people are becoming much more... I'm conscious of who they buy from. So the, the younger generations would buy specifically from brand or, or boycott a brand specifically because of what they do, how they do it. Yeah. Um, so it's become much more important nowadays to have a purpose. Brands need a purpose. If you're just there to make profits, people see through that. Exactly. You, need to, you need to have a purpose. And, and that and needs... Mm, sorry, that needs to fall down into your employees and into your, if your if your employees do not f believe in the purpose that they're working for, how can your customers believe in okay. that purpose? Um, so brand architecture archetype um, uh, tone of voice. Uh, this is something which is so and, and this is all which is kind of on 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 social media platforms and on digital kind of you have the opportunity to therefore produce exactly. content. Yes. Um, uh, which again, I guess it's, it's, it requires another set of skills no, to produce mm -hmm. good content apart from being authentic, which has always been there, like you said. But now there are new new skills that you require because you know, the, the platforms require new content built in, yeah. a, in a new way, kind of. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some brands who would, like, we all know video on social media tends to perform better than a static image, for example. And some people follow these rules religiously, so they would say, okay, so let's do video, but they don't know how to do video. Yeah. So it would be a very flat and unexciting and yeah. just noise, you know? So knowing how to actually address so the first thing is answering what's in it for me for your customer as obvious as that is some people Needs still don't do it um having certain like there are certain rules such as make sure your brand shows within the first few seconds on social because the attention span is significantly shorter than it would be on other platforms um there are certain rules basically with content marketing that someone who is creating those content pieces needs to be aware of. And then on top of that, it's not just about following rules, but there is authenticity is the most important thing Absolutely. as well. Yeah. Um, so you need to bring your authenticity into that comment. Yes. Um, so there's a trust, there's a, there's a lot, as you can hear, that needs to be factored in when you do. But, but it's, I'm glad you're mentioning trust and authenticity. Mm. I wanted to, in fact, move to kind of the ethical dilemmas. What mm -hmm. would be the ethical you know, risks and, or the ethical boundaries when a company is really taking digital seriously? Anyone? Oh, go ahead. I? Okay. So in my case, I've actually, so I, I used to work as a digital marketer in general, you know, like I used to do a lot of advertising and um, like digital marketing overall. And now I've moved into a company where it's much, it's all about privacy and it's about respecting people's privacy. So the ethical side comes into my work significantly. And this is why I mentioned trust and I mentioned the authenticity as such an important part because we do still create content and we do still do use all of these platforms, but the way we use them, we do it in a way where it's all about the user, you know? It, we've become so user-centric in the sense of it, it's the community. Like, we do a lot of user-generated content mm -hmm. as well. Um, it's it's all about the 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 brand communicating with the com with the community and the community. It, it, it's a dialogue, basically, exactly. nowadays. And it's a dialogue which is kind of genuine it's and with genuine certain one. parameters that are kind of, kind we, of respected. Correct. In fact, we even do surveys where we ask the community, um, like our, our customers and the community, would they want to hear more about, you know? And we, it's it's honestly like the relationship we have with our, with our audience is... Okay. It's special, like we never ever paid for anything okay. on social okay. media because the brand is so strong okay. that the community... It's kind of is, bot is bottom up in a way. It, correct. Okay. It's it's okay. that special where I work at the moment. But I've seen the other side because I used to work, for example, in gaming where um, 
advertising is, is significantly more aggressive, important. Aggressive, yeah. Very aggressive. Okay. So it's, it's, um, I'm very happy to be on the side of the, of the um, um, coin, of the I guess. Yeah. Of, of the dilemma. Of the yes, exactly, because it's truly about the brand then, and exactly. it's truly about the mission. And when your mission is really clear, you, you, you've got everything. Absolutely. Exactly. Benji, ethical dilemmas. I think you point on something, which is research. I think that, yes. and if we go back to the beginning of the conversation, digital marketing has done a lot of wonders, but it's also done something which is, for me, very bad. We've stopped listening to our customers because we assume that because we can go live with something so fast, oh, we'll just go live, click, click play, right? You'd go, you change an artwork, go live with it. In the past, you didn't have the luxury of doing that. In the past, if you worked on a campaign and it, you had one chance to go live to print, you'd obviously spend a lot of time making sure that what you're going to go out there with was correct, mm -hmm. right tone of voice to the right audience, to everything. So they did a lot of research, focus groups, customer analysis. Okay. This has and we do gone, less of this. This has gone out the window. Okay. This is, you, companies, companies don't even have a budget for this. Companies don't even factor in research into part of their marketing budget. Um, and this, is, this falls into that. For us to understand the community, understand the customers, you have to ask questions. You have to go out there and say, interested, yeah. are you enjoying what we're pushing out to you? Yeah. What do you stand for? Do you believe in what we stand yeah. for? But if you're not going to have this dialogue, this conversation with them, you're assuming that what you're putting out there is being received. That's really interesting. Um, uh, so research has really become, yeah. um, I think, that unique tool that if companies adopt it, they could really see big gains from it. Um, because no one's doing it. Exactly. <laughs> no it's, one... it's research, but it's also working with the community, yes. I would say. It doesn't just stop at research. It's, it's an investment that the company It's a two-way commu communication, yes. which is ongoing. Exactly. It's saying. an ongoing, and it's not just about... Um, surveys and whatnot, I mentioned that, but oh. it, it goes beyond that in you're constantly engaging with exactly. your community and um, the community sometimes can create that content as well for you. Um, going beyond the, my own brands that I've worked with, um, I'll use Jamie Oliver as an example. His community like created so much content that they created a website with recipes and whatnot for him, you know? So. There are brands that are taking user-generated content to a whole other okay. level okay. because they have such a strong mission and such a strong yeah. um, purpose, no? sense of purpose, exactly, mm -hmm. that people believe in that purpose yeah. and they'll support you. So it's, it's, not just, it's not enough to just be a brand and invest mm -hmm. and so on. It's, I think we've reached a point where, like Benji was saying, people have become so intelligent and even on social media, especially if you're talking about a younger audience, they know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you need, to, you need to really have a strong purpose behind you. In fact, the, the last question I have for you and for Benji as well is, you know, for, for our you know, audience, mm -hmm. you know, what would be kind of your you know, three points or four points of principle of how to prepare a company to kind of take digital seriously? Christina first. I would start with the, I mean, I read this book, so I, I'm quoting the title of the book, which is Start With Why. Yeah. Why are you doing what you're doing? Um, um, and then understand where your audience is. So I'm, I'm going into the basics of everything, I would say, which is why are you, wh why are you doing this? Who are you speaking to? Where do they spend their time? Um, how, how can you communicate with them? So the, this is like as basic as it gets, but... It's an oversight for many companies, unfortunately. So begin with that and then start forming the right strategy, start the research, you know, work with an agency or, you know, I love the model that you've mentioned. That's really intelligent. So um, find an agency like this, you know, where, where they're willing to help you hire the right people as well. Um, and then make sure that you keep on working with your community. Absolutely. Benji. Word of advice. To build off that, I am, so everything that was said, but get the right people in place. Okay. 
<laughs> so people really miss this. A, a detail, huh? No? They, they, sometimes <laughs> they have all these plans and then they just, you know, I love it when a company says, okay, we have a digital plan, we're going to do everything, and then they randomly pick someone from the office and say, okay, you're our new you're digital leader. from tomorrow. You're our new digital leader. I mean, it, it goes, I mean, that's where it fails, right? For straight off the bat. And you need everyone's buy-in from the CFO to the CEO to the COO to everyone. Um, sometimes we even find struggling points because the CFO doesn't believe in it. Fundamentally, if the CFO doesn't believe in it, he's not going to approve that PO and he's going to keep on putting hurdles and hurdles. You need everyone on board yeah. um, uh, and you need a good team of people to do it. Absolutely right. There needs to be a consistent team that is building this. Um, and yes, it's going to be hard. And yes, you're going to see, see money going out before money comes in. Exactly. But that's like everything else in business. If you're not yep. going to invest in it, someone else is, they're going to overtake you. In fact, this conversation is, is very much about kind of how, you know, we do what we've been doing for many years, but kind of with new possibilities and new opportunities. Yeah. Benji Borge, Christina Goji, it has been really a pleasure to have you on International Insights today. Thank you. Of Thank course. you very much. Thank you. If you found this podcast useful, we have others on managing a crisis, on nurturing talent and on what we can learn from the world of sport, amongst others. You can find them on Spotify under International Insights or in video format on YouTube. This podcast series is produced for Trade Malta. It's made possible thanks to the assistance of HSBC and their international business financing solutions. We get technical help from Studio 7. Thanks for being with us.